Navita Semiconductor, that's NVTS, strong bullish technical signals, market optimism, but then uh, some serious fundamental questions and maybe some warning flags too. It's definitely not a simple picture. And just to pin down the price action, it hit that 52 week high, $17.79 on October 20th. Right. But by the close on Friday, the 24th, it had pulled back, closed at $14.07, still up on the day though, about 3.38%. Yeah, up 3.38% that day. But it's clearly, you know, digesting that huge news. It's in a consolidation phase now. Yeah, catching its breath. Exactly. And what's really interesting is how strong the technical still look. Even after pulling back from that peak, the market seems to be saying, okay, this new level around $14 is justified because of that NVIDIA news. Just look at the long-term trend markers, that $14.07 close. It's way above the 50-day moving average, which is down at $8.12. And it's even further above the 200-day MA. Well, that's it. way down at $5.14. Well, that's a big gap. It is. And when the price is that far above both major long-term averages, it confirms the bullish trend is not just intact, it's actually accelerating. It tells you the big investors, they aren't selling into this rally yet. They see it as a core holding for growth. And the shorter term momentum, like the RSI, is that flashing any warning signs? Well, that's echoing the strengths too. But interestingly, Without being extremely overbought yet, the 14-day RSI, the Relative Strength Index, it's at 64.64. Okay, so 64.64. Explain why that specific number is important here. Right, because anything over 50 shows bullish momentum, which this clearly does. But the real danger zone, the overbought level, where you often expect a sharp pullback, that's usually considered above 70. Ah, so it's strong, but not too strong yet. Exactly. By staying below 70, it suggests there's still healthy buying pressure, maybe room to run higher, without needing an immediate sharp correction just based on the technicals. It kind of implies this consolidation we're seeing is actually pretty healthy. Okay. The bulls are holding the line. They are. And we're seeing a clear range develop after that rally. The resistance, where sellers are trying to cap it, looks tight between about $14.82 and $15.04. So a break above that 1504 level could mean another leg up. Could mean a retest of the highs, yeah. And on the downside, the support seems to be forming pretty solidly between $13.60 and $13.80. That's where buyers really stepped in after the peak. So holding 1360 is key for the bulls. Absolutely. As long as it stays above that level, the technical setup looks pretty constructive. And remember, the broader market context too, right? The Nasdaq Q was up over 1% that Friday. Right, a positive backdrop helps. Yeah, a rising tide helps strong stocks like MTTS hold their gains, or at least consolidate. Okay, so strong technicals, massive market relevance. That's compelling. But, you know, eventually the fundamentals have to catch up, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look under the hood. The stock's clearly priced for future growth, but what's the actual financial health of the company right now? And this is where we hit that first uh, significant point of tension in the data. If you look strictly at profitability, NVTS is still very much a growth story. It hasn't you know, hit a profitability yet. The P-E ratio trailing 12 months, it's actually negative, negative 21.63. Whoa, negative 21. Yeah. And the last reported earnings per share for Q2 2025, that was negative 5 cents. OK, wait, a negative P-E that high? Even for a growth stock in a hot area, that feels like a lot of risk baked in. How does the market justify ignoring that lack of profit, especially with such strong technicals? That's exactly the right question. And the answer, or at least part of it, seems to lie in the balance sheet. It's remarkably stable. So while they are losing money operationally right now, they have this really solid foundation to fund their growth, including that big NVIDIA deal. How solid are we talking? Well, look at the debt-to-equity ratio, the DE. It's tiny approximately 0 0.02. To put that in perspective, it means they have almost no debt. About $7.4 million compared to nearly $389 million in equity. Okay, so very little debt. That's a big plus. It's a huge cushion. It means they don't have to panic about hitting profitability tomorrow. They don't need to rush out and raise money just to fulfill these big contracts. That low debt kind of offsets the concern over the negative PE, at least for now. It buys them time. So the market's betting that the time bought by that clean balance sheet lets them turn that NVIDIA partnership into real revenue and eventually profit. What about the analysts? Do they agree with that optimism? Generally, yes. The analyst consensus leans positive. You've got 50% rating at a, a buy overall that breaks down to 33% strong buy, 17% just buy. 
then 33% are on hold, and only 17% have a sell rating. So definitely tilted towards optimism. And does institutional money back that up? It does. The big players have definitely taken notice. Institutions hold around 40.8% of the shares. And we're talking major names like Vanguard, BlackRock. The usual suspects for long-term bets. Exactly. They're clearly buying into the long-term story here. The shift to GAN and CPP is driven by AI. Their presence sort of validates the company's strategy and stability. Okay, now, here's where things get really interesting, maybe even a bit wild. We've got the strong technicals, the institutional backing, but the market psychology data you shared shows this massive split, right? Two really powerful forces seem to be pulling in opposite directions, creating a lot of tension. Yeah, this is the crux of the short-term setup. Let's start with the element that makes this stock potentially explosive. Okay. The short interest, the short float, based on the latest data we have, is sitting at 28.48%. 28%, that's huge. It's extremely high. I mean, usually anything over 10% is considered high, nearing 30%. That means almost three out of every 10 shares available to trade are shorted. So tons of people are betting the price is going to collapse. Precisely. And that level of short interest, it's like a coiled spring. If the price manages to break higher, maybe push through that resistance around $15 we talked about, yeah. all those short sellers, they're suddenly losing a lot of money. They get margin calls. They're forced to buy back shares immediately to cut their losses. The short squeeze. The classic short squeeze. That forced buying can create a massive rapid surge in price, often detached from fundamentals for a bit. So that potential is definitely part of the current price dynamic. And adding fuel to that potential fire, you've got the options market. What's the signal there? The options traders seem incredibly bullish. The put call ratio is way down at 0 0.41. 0 0.41. So... Fewer puts than calls. Way fewer puts. A ratio below one means more calls, that's the price goes up, than puts, that's the price goes down. Mm -hmm. A ratio as low as 0 0.41 isn't just bullish, it's extremely bullish. It suggests options traders are overwhelmingly positioned for the price to keep going up. Okay, so technicals bullish, options market screaming bullish, and a massive short position that could get squeezed. Seems like a one-way bet. But there's a catch, right? There's always a catch. And here it's a big one. The counter signal that you absolutely have to factor in, insider activity. Ah, the insiders. What are they doing? Well, despite the huge NVIDIA news, the strong chart, all the bullish sentiment, there has been significant net selling by insiders over the last three months, mm -hmm. especially concentrated back in September based on the filings. Selling. While the stock is running up and signing deals with NVIDIA? Exactly. That feels off. That's the classic red flag, isn't it? If the company's prospects are so bright, why are the people who know it best selling shares? It definitely raises a critical question. Now, it could just be normal diversification, insiders cashing out some holdings after yeah. a big run-up. They have lockup periods, windows to sell. Sorry, that happens. But it can also signal caution from within. Maybe they see challenges ahead, maybe profitability is further off than the market thinks, or maybe the initial revenue from that NVIDIA deal won't be as immediate or large as hoped. It's a necessary dose of skepticism against all the external hype. You have to weigh the market's excitement against what the insiders are actually doing with their own stock. Mm, okay. And quickly, you also mentioned we have some broader market data coming up. Yeah. Just a heads up, the macro environment might get choppy. The GDP Q2 2025 third estimate is due on October 30th. Any big surprise there, positive or negative, could ripple through the market and affect risk appetite for growth stocks like NVTS. Right. Always something to keep an eye on. So, okay, let's try to synthesize all this. It's complex. You've got a company, Navitas, perfectly positioned for this huge shift towards power-efficient AI chips validated by a major NVIDIA partnership that's backed up by really strong technicals, the moving averages, the RSI, and huge market optimism shown by that crazy short interest and the bullish options. But, but that optimism runs headfirst into real fundamental questions. They aren't profitable yet. And maybe more importantly, you have that worrying signal from the insiders selling shares right near the recent highs. It's really a battle, isn't it? A battle mm -hmm. between the market's belief in the future story and maybe some internal prudence or caution. And for you listening, the big catalyst, the thing that's likely going to force some resolution to this tension is just around the corner. The next quarterly earnings report, Q3 2025. That's scheduled for Monday, November 3rd, 2025. Yeah, that date is circled on a lot of calendars. That report will really test everything. The institution's conviction, the options traders' bets, and crucially, the resolve of that huge crowd of short sellers. So given that extremely high short float, almost 
here's the final thought we want to leave you with. How much of this current price, consolidating around $14, is really about the company's underlying value right now? And how much is just positioning? The price being held in this tight range, almost waiting for the earnings report to potentially trigger massive volatility, especially for those short sellers. That potential squeeze, driven by earnings, that seems like the biggest variable for NVTS in the next couple of weeks. 